What's going on, Washington Commanders Nation? Breaking news to start Tuesday, February 28th, as the Washington Commanders are the first team to use the franchise tag on a player this offseason. It's a player we all know who's going to get franchise tag. Deron Payne slapped with the franchise tag a couple weeks before the March 7th franchise tag date. We hired a new quarterbacks coach and made some changes on the offensive staff. And Daniel the Dweeb Snyder, the most unsmooth criminal in the history of smooth criminals, has about $55 million worth of money that is unaccounted for, and he's being investigated some more by the NFL, and the minority owners are starting to air his ass out. Danny, are you okay? We are that much closer to getting this idiot out of the organization. This is Rambling with Rio. Washington Commanders Nation. It is Tuesday, the last day of February, February 28th, and the combine is underway. The field drills don't start until Thursday, but all of the coaches, brass, and front office of the teams, they're now in Indianapolis, and they're ready to talk. Ron and Mayhew, I believe, are both going live from Indianapolis today at about noon. I'll have my takeaways and reactions from what they're talking about after they have the conversation. But breaking news this morning, Deron Payne has been hit with the franchise tag. This is not a surprise to anyone. Everyone knows he was expected to get the tag. And what the tag does is it gives Washington, it puts Payne on the books for 2023 at a cap hit of 18.9 million. So we can call that 19 million. We freed up 31 million yesterday. So we have no problem doing this. And what it allows us to do, it gives us about a four-month window to negotiate a long-term deal with Deron Payne before it's shelved for the 2023 season. The franchise tag does not mean a long-term deal cannot get done. What it does is it gives it gives teams the flexibility to have a guy on the books, not let him test the free agent market. You can shop him to other teams, or you can work on a long-term deal, knowing Washington's rigid history with the franchise tag history tells us that we not we won't get a long-term deal done with him because we've played tag roulette with kurt cousins and brandon sheriff we hit the tag we hit cousins with the tag twice sheriff with the tag once and they both walked and we ended up getting nothing in return but third round compensatory draft picks my whole idea and ideology of the franchise tag is if you guys in the early weeks to months of the franchise tag are that far apart that you don't think a deal is going to get done. Work on the framework and the parameters of a trade and be done with this shit already. Don't play tag roulette with Theron Payne. I, I, I have no patience for it anymore. If a long-term deal cannot get hashed out, trade him. Get whatever top value is for him. Get more than just a third-round compensatory pick. I would like Deron Payne signed long-term here. But the fact of the matter is we cannot sign everybody. Deron, uh, Jer Jonathan Allen got his bag. Montez Sweat is due up next and Chase Young after him. I do think there's a lot more earning of the contract that those guys need to do. But Deron Payne is an interesting case study. He was always, he was always good. But contract year he had one thing he had one issue to his game he was always a good interior pass rusher but he had no he was always a good interior d lineman but he had no pass rush game and then this year he comes out with 11 and a half sacks third most at his position in the league and that is called buyer beware when it comes to contract season a lot of falcon fans are telling me the same thing about free agent right tackle caleb mcgarry they say he was mid until his contract year and all of a sudden he starts fucking up shit like that is called buyer beware. We know who Deron Payne is, but this year has been more of an outlier to his game. Yes, he's young, and yes, he was raw and still had things he needed to work on, but you're not going to get this type of production from Deron Payne on a regular basis, but he is very good, and he's very integral to what we want to do up front on the defense, so a long-term deal does make sense. My whole thing is if a long-term deal isn't going to happen and he's talking about making Aaron Donald money, then – Sayonara, get the best trade value possible for him. There's a couple other guys due up at his position. Younger guys on rookie deals as well. Jeffrey Simmons of the Tennessee Titans and Quinnen Williams of the New York Jets. So 
The market's going to be set quite a few ways in his position. And Jerron Payne, he's represented by Siegel. And Siegel wants every dollar he can get out of anybody. But Jerron Payne slapped with the tag. We knew it was coming. And I'm glad they got it out the way. They want to go into combine week, ready to start all conversations. Payne's agent's going to be out there. A whole bunch of teams' agents going to be out there. This is what you do during combine week. It's when everything, it's when the sausage is made for the NFL offseason. And we also made some shakeups to the offensive staff here in Washington. We hired former Stanford quarterback, offensive coordinator, and quarterbacks coach, Davida Pritchard, as our new quarterbacks coach. Shout out to the guy, 36 years old, a nice young guy to grow with a young quarterback. You love to see it. He was Stanford's quarterback before he was replaced by the great Andrew Luck. And what that does is it relegates quarterbacks coach, former quarterbacks coach Ken Zampezi to now be a senior offensive advisor, game management guy. And what that position sounds like to me, he needs to be Ron's babysitter. Ken Zampezi needs to be the offensive babysitter of Ron Rivera. He needs to hold the challenge flag and hold some physical representation of timeouts and he needs to do them for Ron because Ron clearly has his hand full running this entire franchise and forgets how to run the clock sometimes. Forgets how to he forgets the whole concept of time management. So as a senior offensive advisor, I'm gonna need him to be on the sideline advising Ron on how to manage time because Ron likes to try to take timeouts home with him. Ron likes to try to challenge plays that don't need to be challenged, and it's just a whole clusterfuck of time management gaffes on a regular basis here. We also promoted uh, DB coach Brett Visselmeyer to replace Chris Harris, and Richard Rogers moved up to a senior defensive assistant and safeties coach. Also, assistant DB and nickel coach Christian Garcia with more moves to come, and Nikki, Nikki Jabwala just posted that we're going to be interviewing some candidates for the wide receiver coach position. I would like to see that be a known guy. I would like a known commodity as a former receiver in the league, be the wide receivers coach. Give me a Chad Ochocinco, a Pierre Garcon, shit, Santana Moss. Give me somebody we know, or give me somebody notable at that position or another young up, come, up and comer like Drew Terrell. Give me someone young with upside who actually flourished at the position before. But <clears throat> the other big news is that Washington Fans, we're currently watching an episode of Billions in Succession take place here. We're watching it, and we have the worst known villain ever, Dan Snyder. Dan Snyder really is the most unsmooth criminal in the history of criminals. I wish he would just take his ball and go to fuck home. But Dan being Dan has to make things harder on himself. And... Him versus Bezos, him shutting out Bezos and then Bezos replying in the Washington Post saying, Dan, Dan wishes for indemnification for all accusations if he sells the team. And then the team comes out and says, no, that's not the truth. What that's saying is the Washington Post is reporting that Dan wants like to sell the team. He wants you to pretty much disappear his name from all the allegations and reports and everything that was going on here. And Dan's denying it. Dan's peoples are denying it. And then <clears throat> today, it's reported that there's been some $55 million loan that's unaccounted for. And Dan's former minority owners are airing his ass out saying that Dan used the team as his personal piggy bank on top of his own $10 million salary that he was making here. There's been a $55 million loan that did not take place with board approval. He charged $4.5 million to put the team's logo on his private jet, chalked it up to a franchise expense. He called it an advertising fee. And then in 2020, he planned to expense more than $7 million worth of unreimbursed business expenses from 2027 to 2020. And it included a 2018 yacht party in southern France where Snyder hosted Robert Kraft, Jerry Jones, and Terry Paguna. The, form, the chickens have come to roost, Daniel Snyder. The former minority owners are airing you out. The league is looking into your business, and I know they are absolutely sickened by how you are blowing the bag for the other 31 owners. Just know as each story comes out, 
about this dweeb motherfucker Dan Snyder, the price and value of this team drops with each story. And not only that, you picked a war with the richest American, Jeff Bezos. You're not going to win that. Jeff Bezos probably has a copy of the Mary Jo White investigation sitting on his coffee table as we speak as leverage to air Dan ass out if he thinks he's really going to shut him out the bidding of this team. It's nonstop when it comes to this guy, and it's nonstop when it comes to this football team. But you got to love it. We're about 10 minutes away from noon. Ron is about to do his combine presser. We're going to have takeaways and reactions coming from that. Anything sale related coming out or anything personnel related, your boy's going to be dropping content. As it comes out, you'll have it on the channel. Thank you for rocking with your boy. And hail to the Washington Commanders. Please get Daniel Snyder out of here ASAP. Deuces.